Hey everybody, what's going on? Jeff Rinker, another episode of the Daily Ticket. This one for a Friday. Again, I have no idea if you enjoy that or if that annoys the shit out of you. But it's the 8th of March. It's Friday. The weekend is just around the corner. It's nice outside. The tournament is just around the corner. Next weekend, championship tournaments. The following weekend, the big dance. Like, yes, please. I got to get this off my chest, though, too. So yesterday, I did the podcast all about Javier Baez. His spring stats blow. 0 for 12. Six games, six strikeouts. Does have one RBI. So I did the stat breakdown in the spring of Javi Baez, and I asked the simple question, if Javier should join the all-time top 10 list of disliked Detroit athletes. And it doesn't have to be athletes. We're talking GMs. We're talking front office people. We're talking coaches and managers as well. So I compiled my list. I compiled my list, and I do appreciate the reaction. I'll read some of that coming up when I get to the comments. But I, I, I put together my list. I thought it was pretty good. Top 10 dislike Detroit athletes and people in sports. And you would not believe how many tweets I got of people saying, hey, dumbass, it's spring training. It doesn't matter. Javi might not be good, but this isn't the reason why. It's no indication. And people, I said that from the get-go. I did. There are two things in life that you never, ever do. I don't know where these balloons are coming from. Let me try that again. Two things in life. Look at that. That you never, ever do. Can we try one more time? If you're not watching on YouTube, you should go over to YouTube and watch this. When I put up the peace sign, balloons just come from nowhere. One more time. Here we go. Two things in life. No, it's not working. Anyway. Like I was saying, there's two things in life that you should never, ever do. One of them is put any credibility or credence into spring training stats. What you do in the spring in the Grapefruit League or the Citra, and none of that matters. It has no indication or no bearing on if you're going to have a good season or if you're going to have a shitty season. It doesn't matter. But I was thinking with Javier Baez, considering how bad he was last year and the year before as a Detroit Tiger, the stats are so eye-popping and so pathetic that I had to bring it up. The other thing that you never do, by the way, is you never, ever, and I do mean never, take your doctor results from the portal. Everybody's got a portal now, so you get the results from all your tests before the doctors can even look at them. So you get all this medical jargon coming at you. This happened to me recently. And I'm looking at all my results and what do you do because I'm not a doctor and I don't know what any of this means. I Googled everything. Do you know? That's why you never do it, by the way. I'm dying in like 17 different ways. Not only do I have a partially collapsed lung, but I'm pretty sure that I need my gallbladder out. I'm pretty sure I have kidney stones and I'm pretty sure my heart is enlarged. Like that's what I came away with. I then went to the doctor and he told me none of that was true that I had no idea what I was talking about and I should never ever Google the medical results. Well, why are you sending them to me then? Why am I getting it before my doctor gets it? it? Takes my doctor five days a week to review this stuff. I get it within an hour of the test. What am I supposed to do? The internet's there for a reason. I look it up, I figure out I'm dying. You're always dying. When you look up your medical results, you're always dead. It always leads to a really bad place. You never survive, at least according to the internet. And then thankfully, usually, hopefully, you go to your doctor and he says, yeah, dude, you're fine. Go about your day. Go play some golf. Go live your life. You're good to go. Perfectly healthy. Two things you never do. Put no credibility into spring training stats. And never, never, a PSA to you, never, ever, Google your symptoms or your test labs from a doctor because nine times out of 10, you will find out that you're dying and you're probably not. I mean, I guess we all are to a certain extent, but not as quickly as the internet's going to tell you you're dying. So yes, I know his spring stats don't mean shit. I understand it. 
but I thought it was pertinent. I thought it was interesting. He's been so bad. Furthermore, he might play today. Tonight they play at six. I'm doing this podcast Thursday at two. So maybe he rebounds. Maybe he goes yard twice today and we have nothing to worry about. Or maybe he's the Javi Baez as he was the last two seasons. But that's the only reason I brought up those spring stats. So let's move on, shall we? Because I want to talk about something that has been in the news. I have yet to hit on it. But the more I think about it, it is the perfect move for the Detroit Lions. I think the Lions should go out and get cornerback Legereus Sneed, who's really good, the best corner on the market from the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're not convinced, let me go ahead and convince you. Because what I have is an update. I have how much it might cost. I have other teams that have inquired about the corner. I also tell you how good he is. And then at the end, we summarize everything. And I ask you, would you do it? Because I would. So here's what we know. The Detroit Lions have reached out to the Chiefs about possibly trading for Legereus Sneed. They have. Now, we know what Brad Holmes said. It seems like the Lions aren't going to make a big splash in free agency. This would be considered a trade, but it's kind of the same deal because you got to extend them. But I do think, and I think we heard some of this coming out of the combine, A, that the Lions are interested in the free agent market of corners. This counts, even though you got to trade for them. And B, that they do have enough money to spend on one big time free agent. Would that free agent be Legereus Sneed? According to Pro Football Talk, there are seven teams that are interested in the 27-year-old quarterback. Lions, of course, Vikings, Colts, Titans, Patriots, Falcons, and Jags. For a trade to work out, you need Snead to agree to a contract extension. I don't think that would be that big of a deal. And you need the Chiefs to agree to trade him. Currently, he's on the franchise tag. He's making 19.8 million bucks this season if not traded and stays in Kansas City. Chiefs are barely under the salary cap, so they want to trade him. I don't think there's any question about it. They're getting the best quarterback in the market because the Bears decided to keep Jalen Johnson. I think Jalen Johnson may be a little better than Legereus Sneed, but not much. And you have no chance at Johnson. So now you look at Sneed. He's 27 years old, and the believed cost to trade for Legereus Sneed would be a second-round pick, no problem there, and $20 million bucks a season. Now, I am a little unclear how many years you would have to give the cornerback, but I do believe with the salary cap continuing to go up, 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 that in two years, three years, a deal for Sneed, he's not even 30 yet or just turning 30, Looks pretty cheap, doesn't it? Considering you give him 20 mil a year now, how good is that deal in two years, three years, where he becomes even a better player and hopefully helps you win a Super Bowl? I think Brad Holmes would rather keep the second round pick. That's his baby, the draft. But one second round pick to trade for the best corner, your glaring weakness, I would say, yeah. Like the Lions corner situation is not good. And it's the number one priority that they have to address. They re-signed Emmanuel Mosley. And I think that's a depth move. He played all of two downs last season before coming back from an ACL, then blowing out the other ACL. They still have Cam Sutton, who was ranked the sixth worst free agent signing in 2023. Legereus Sneed would help in a big way at a minimum. You don't have to worry about the last six, seven games last season when you saw Justin Jefferson and Mike Evans and Puka Nakua and C.D. Lamb go off for like at least 150 a game. Legereus Sneed is only 27. Did I mention that? He's good in coverage. Two picks last season, 14 deflections. He's a willing run defender. He's a capable blitzer. He also led the NFL in yards per target allowed, only 4.8 yards. That's pretty good. Now listen to this. Last season, this is wild. Sneed covered an opponent's top receiver on at least 65% of snaps, a league high seven times during the regular season. Only once, one time, were any of those receivers able to catch more than two passes. That was Devontae Adams when they played the Raiders. He had five catches for 73 yards. Legereus Sneed did not allow a touchdown catch as the nearest defender all season long. 
And then the playoffs started, and he allowed a touchdown against the Bills. In the AFC title game, Snead lined up against Zay Flowers 21 times. Snead allowed one catch for 54 yards. One catch, 54 yards in 21 times covering Zay Flowers. And then at the very end of the game, he made the biggest play of the game by knocking the ball away from Flowers just before he crossed the goal line. Chiefs recovered it, ruled the fumble. Chiefs ended up winning, going to the Super Bowl, and they won a Super Bowl. Not only is it a position of need, not only is he affordable, not only do you have the money, but he's that good. 57 career games, he has 10 picks, 40 passes defended. He has one pick and seven passes defended in 13 playoff games. And if you get Snead, he becomes your top corner. Cam Sutton, cornerback too, where he should have been all along Kindell Veldor is not going to be a starter anymore. Get a little depth there. And the Lions also parted ways with Jerry Jacobs, but brought back Emmanuel Mosley. Plus, you do have three capable safeties. Iffy, Kirby Joseph, and Brian Branch. As Dave Burkett from the Free Press wrote about this, adding a player like Snead will improve your Super Bowl chances. Plus, what would you rather do? Go out and get the best corner on the market, or would you rather draft one? To draft a cornerback is a very risky proposition because eventually that individual might work out. But traditionally, corners take a very long time to develop. Your window for a Super Bowl is right now. Legereus need can help you so much. Turns your defense from what? A middle of the pack defense to, dare I say, top 10 defense? And don't get me wrong, you still have other needs. you got to improve your defensive line. Got to figure out what you're doing with your third receiver. Probably go out and get another kicker as well. Also, you need to figure out, like, your offensive line. Are you resigning Glasgow and Jackson, or are you getting those guards from someplace else? There's decisions to be made. But the Lions have more than 50 million bucks in cap space. Yeah, they got to pay golf. Yeah, they got to pay St. Brown. Yes, next year you got to pay Panay Sewell and others, Aiden Hutchinson too. But let's say you sign Snead for $20 million a season, four years. You can afford it. It's going to look like a bargain in a couple of years. And he would solve your biggest weakness right now. Second round pick, $20 million a season. Are you doing it? Do you buy the hype in luxurious Snead? I do. Best cornerback out there. Now, you can always go for a cheaper version of a cornerback. No question about that. Like Stefan Gilmore is out there. There's other corners that will be cheaper, but not as good, not as game-changing, not as transcendent. I look at Legereus Sneed like I look at the Tigers and a guy like Matt Chapman. Tigers went for Gio Urshelo. Bargain basement, $1.5 million bucks, no more power. Best years are five years behind him. But they signed him. He's fine. But I think Matt Chapman would have been better. Help you win ball games. Same thing with Legeria Snead. You can go out and get a cheaper option. There's no question about it. You can go out and get a more cap-friendly option. But he's not going to be as good as the best cornerback that you can get at age 27 years old. So what do you think? Are you with me? It's weird. Because you bring up a possibility of maybe a Chris Jones. The big defensive tackle from Kansas City, game-changing, absolute stud, would look great in a Lions uniform, have to give him a ton of money too. And a lot of people are like, no, he's not going to leave Kansas City. Well, maybe he does. The Chiefs and Jones have not come to an agreement so far. So who knows if he's going to become available or not. My whole point is there were a lot of Lions fans when I brought up the possibility of Chris Jones. And listen, it's a very, very minute possibility. But a lot of Lions fans are like, no, I don't want to pay him. No, that's way too much money. No, he's 30 years old. I don't want to use my money that way. Now, I think that's crazy because he would definitely help as well. Same thing with Legereus Sneed. He will help. He's three years younger than Chris Jones. And he will solve a massive issue that you have in your secondary. I wonder how many fans are willing to do it. Second round pick, $20 million a season. That's what we're thinking. You in? Let me know. Comment section. I'm doing it.
and I'm going to enjoy my Super Bowl as well. I think it's in New Orleans this year. Legerious need can help you. Lions should really make it happen. And here's the thing. They're one of the seven teams. So for all the people that said, oh, Brad Holmes, no, no, no. He's not going to go for a big free agent. Well, why are they inquiring? At least it means that they're a little bit interested, which I think is fantastic. Let's look at some comments and then let's let you get on with your weekend. Comments from yesterday's podcast. I compiled a list in honor of Javier Baez having the most surprising spring stats I've ever seen. Six games, 12 at-bats, six strikeouts. I do think it's time that we added Javier Baez to the all-time dislike Detroit athlete list. Here's what people are saying. Gary D. Guitar says, for me, it was Babcock. Babcock did help you win a cup, though. Almost two. Darren Persicki, 5266. Brad Osmus, he was handed the keys to the Cadillac and crashed it. Another guy that was the smartest in the room, but couldn't pass it on to his players or staff. Brad Osmus is a great one. How about Austin Bros, our good buddy? For me, it has to be Joe Dumars. He won the 2004 title, but I feel like Rieger could be the GM and would have won with that team. He tanked the Pistons. We've never been the same as a team. A total train wreck from a Pistons legend. Now, he did get a response from another commenter. Gary D. Guitar says, I think Goris is infinitely more of a train wreck. I actually would agree with Gary. I love Austin. He's always commenting. He's always watching the daily ticket. Joe Dumars won you a title. I don't think I could have won the Pistons the title. I do appreciate the compliments, Austin. I'm not saying Joe was perfect because he sure wasn't, but there was also a selling of the team. Karen Davidson made sure the Pistons didn't do anything before they sold the team. I think Joe was kind of hamstrung a little bit. I don't know, like Joe Dumars and Ken Holland, they did so much good here that when people bring up the bad they're responsible for, and you're right, they're responsible for it, I do have a soft spot in my heart for both those guys. So I don't know if I agree with Joe Dumars. Uh, how about one more? A. Loxley, 24-15. I love when Javi swings at sliders two feet out of the zone time and time again. He doesn't want to be here, took the money. Now he regrets his decision. See, I disagree. I don't think he regrets his decision at all. I think there's one of two things going on with Javier Baez. I think he's simply not motivated, which would lead to your point. He took the money and is just enjoying making $98 million over the next four years. or he simply has lost it. Now, maybe you could argue he never had it to begin with, but man, I've seen some games last season and the year before where Javi took over ball games, where he stole bases, make great defensive plays, actually look like a competent hitter inside the batter's box. So we'll see what Javi we get this season. But I'll tell you what, man, Javi made a comment at the start of spring training saying, like, I need to be here for the kids. I want to be a leader. Well, let's start seeing it, Javi. It starts with you. Let's start getting those at-bats a hell of a lot better because in the spring so far and your career as a Tiger wearing the old English D, it's been a train wreck. Simple as that. That's going to do it for the Daily Ticket, guys. It's been a fun week. We'll catch you on Monday. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Oh, by the way, the Red Wings might make a move. If they do, we'll talk about it on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. 